Hello everyone, this is Stefan coming to you once again from Inside the Dog House. A while back when I did a crack and resub submission, there's a comment in the comment section that said something along the lines of, uh, would it be possible to make videos of the different stages of a process? And, um, and that idea intrigued me. Uh, with a lot of crack and resub submissions, it's a numbers game, like I'll take 10 books and I want to get bumps on as many as possible and that justifies doing the crack and resub if I get a whole bunch of bumps or even you know a couple of nine eights in there um, but to do it uh, you know it can be done differently where you take one book and you focus on that because it would be you know the, the video would be a mile long it would be like well over an hour if I tried to do this with 10 books but taking one book and following it through the entire process um, adds the depth and it creates a different type of story and I thought yeah that's that's a great idea so um, I decided to do it with the book that I that I bought recently and it is a Hulk 181 it's a CVCS slab and I got it um, by selling off some doubles and stuff uh, you know nicer books and I picked up this one in exchange for it and the reason why I got it well you know it, it basically was a good I, a good one for the video but I thought that it's it's a seven right now and I thought it had potential to get up to an eight so so it'll be an it'll make for an interesting video as we go through the process with the goal of trying to get it as you know an eight a seven five or an eight uh, an eight would be ideal and the um this the difference between and this should be stated right up front there is no real difference between CBCS and CGC grading itself. So this book, looking at it through the case, uh, it's a seven as a, a, like by CBCS. It would have been a seven by CGC. And when I get the book, when I got the book, I noticed there was um, th there were ticks along the side, which I knew about from the front scan. But there's all sorts of creasing along the top. And, and that's something, if there's a great deduction for it, that's something that I can fix because the, it's on white, so it's not breaking any color, and I can, you know, get at it with the ball bearing. So, um, so the first step of the process is buy the book, pick it out, establish the goal. Like, the goal for me was that, um, yes, I paid, you know, the price on it as a seven, uh, but it, I think that it can be more, it can be an eight, and then examine the book more closely, look for fixable flaws. So um, I'll leave the first video there, and this will be a whole bunch of videos tied together. It was my first time trying this type of approach, so I certainly hope that it works, and, and if you're watching this, then hint, it did work, <laughs> so spoiler alert. Um, so I don't know how this is going to turn out at this stage. By the time this video is posted live, the, the results will be in, so it'll be an interesting journey. So this is it for step one, picking out the book. Hello again. Um, I am back to the. It's this video is shot a few seconds after the last one, but I changed the camera angle so that I can show the process of opening up the case. Uh, CBCS cases, this old thin style. Your best friend is a can opener. So there's two tabs on the side, and you just click, and click, and the top comes off. And then once the top is off, you have to excuse me, I might need to, no, I don't even need a different tool for it. So there you go. One can opener, five seconds, books out of the case. Next step is cutting it out. And this one, I people use X-Acto knives for this, and that's what I will officially recommend. 
Um, if you have a steady hand and a good eye, you just give lots of room when you're cutting and you can just use a pair of scissors. You just have to watch that you don't clip the top of the book because once you do that, then you run into issues with it. <clears throat> okay, so we have, I'm going to see how well it should, oh yeah, you can see it. You can see creasing along the very top and rippling. So there's a big crease there, big crease there. And there's ripples all along the very top of it so those are somewhat fixable um, the rippling maybe will leave some residue but i'm going to try to get out as much of this creasing as i can and for the ticks i'm going to give a closer look to you and it doesn't show up very well in like on the camera but there's ticks basically all the way down, um, starting at above the top staple and basically working down to the bottom staple. So I'm counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So um, dozens would be, <laughs> would be the estimate. Now other imperfections on the top, there's a dent there right above my finger. Um, you have a crease in this corner or in this side of the book and you have a whole bunch of creasing in the middle that does not break color and there's a whole there's whole patches of creasing here these are readers creasing just from opening and closing the books so I'm seeing creasing all along the front uh, along the right side especially from the purple pants up to to the fist here and like this whole patch here is all creased up and a crease there but without the color breaks up oh, there's also a crease between the a cre two creases between the l and the k and without the color break i should be able to to get those out now the my assessment of this book after opening it up and taking a look is that it has never been pressed um and i get into trouble with saying that because sometimes you know things have been pressed but um it, but they just don't look like it if someone did pay to prep to have this pressed uh they should ask for their money back because i'm seeing all sorts of fixable stuff along the bottom oops along the very bottom is it going to show up along the very bottom of the book there is creasing as well but it's on the white and then um and this is usually the case trying to get a good angle but it's going to be really hard for the camera to pick up because it's white uh, it's a white background but every place there's a tick on the front that breaks colors is typically a tick or some sort of mark on the back and there are like just rows of ticks on this book as well because of the white here i could get most of that with these ticks the goal is to get them out and minimize it but i can't do anything about the color break and the last flaw that I'll show if I can is running right along the top there's a crease and this is very common for the era of books I think this was a manufacturing uh, issue so there's a crease there um, and impact right along the corner what else am I seeing um, a slight stacking crease right that runs along the length of the book is faint um, at some point someone had books that didn't quite line up on top of it and it created an indentation that you can that you can faintly see and you open it up um, cbcs listed this as a white page book uh, i've had this question before white pages does not mean like crisp white based on what comes out on the stands today. Uh, white means that the color of the pages is the same as when the book originally hit the newsstands. And here is the center fold. It is tight, which is good. I'm also checking the Marvel value stamp, which is there, and the page count to make sure that it is accurate. And this has been graded by CBCS, but there's no guarantee that companies don't make a mistake from time to time. Um, it's typically um, uh, PGX where you get issues where uh, there is something that's not marked. Now I have to be very careful. Here's the inside. 
and you can see the rippling better from the inside that I was talking about right along the top of the book and it looks like there's a stress line but it is not I tested it and it is not uh, broken so I'm gonna have to be super careful in what I do and the reason that matters is when I'm using say a white eraser to get rid of little bits of dirt like you see right over there I can't go into that zone because the, the the stress of an eraser being pushed down on it and, and, and pulling on the paper will separate that and cause a split. But you can see it, it's there on the front too. So this is going to be counted as a, as a minor tear in the book, which was not listed. And there's also little bites along, along there. Hello everyone. This is <laughs> this is now the um, the step where I'll go through part of the pressing process. The um, issue is that I can't put myself in the video at the same time and show you like how I'm working on the book. So I opted to just have the uh, the, the the pressing shown, and I noticed a couple of little folds on the on the corner on the on the bottom. I don't think they'll sh they'll show they're very faint but it's something else that I have to work on which means getting out the ball bearing so for this part of the process where I'm doing front and back excuse me I'll be turning on the the mist the humidifier the mister I use a clothing humidifier and um, it, it warms up fairly quickly and the trick to these is to keep the book the comic book well back so the steam comes out but the comic is getting the moisture without being damaged and then always use the, uh, the silicon or the, uh, the, the you know the baking sheet paper I call it whatever it's called um, always use it before using a tacking iron so I have the tacking iron on and I just give it a quick one over in both directions. I just heated up the corner because I know there's fold overs here. So it's just the start of the process of working on this. There's no intention whatsoever to try to get everything on the first pass. I'm just, um, I'm just seeing what'll come out easily and what won't. So those two corner folds are mostly gone. They didn't break color, which was good. Um, the, uh, the top part there's still you know a few issues but we'll leave that for the next press because I want to spend more time working on the back in the back if you recall there's uh, well you would recall because the video for me it was a long time ago it was hours ago but for you it's just a few seconds so there's creasing all along the top there's creasing along the bottom you can see spine pops at this angle I remember how I said a good light is your friend. This is where it's a very good friend. It's just an open light. I got mine at Bed Bath and & Beyond and I put a daylight bulb in and that way I see absolutely everything. So I'll turn the humidification or humidifier on again. Give it a little bit of steam. And what will likely happen is the um, the ticks will disappear fairly easily, uh, but the top part is going to require quite a bit of work. We'll see how much work after we're done. <clears throat> I usually just give it a, a nice slow um, rollover on, on, the, uh, on the edge, on the spine, to try to deal with the ticks. So let's see what it looks like after the first go through. So the ticks are, you'll probably see it's lessened and the top still needs an awful lot of work. So I am going to begin the process. I'm not going to show all of this. This is going to take me quite a long time to get through. I'm just heating up the paper so that it'll, it'll take and then I just roll the ball bearing over it. And I'm focusing on getting where the lines are. 
so this was the the spot with the most severe lines and after just i'm just going to show you after just a little bit of work the lines have they have not in any way disappeared but they're lessened um, they're quite a bit smaller than they were before which is a good sign that means that there's room to to work on them there's another big set of lines here that are definitely they need to to come out or at least be severely reduced before it goes in for grading and i don't like i said i don't plan on on spending like showing you like a you know 20 or 30 minutes of the same process so i'm just going to do a little bit and then i'm going to shut down and pop the book in in the press it'll be this one that i'm using and after the book goes in um it'll be um in here for a day and then my first cold and then it'll go into a cold press area and be in there for two days and that's that's my process so i see that things are are coming out fairly well i'll get a couple of the small ones while i'm at it that are in the middle of the book and i it, i consider it as kind of an iterative process i'm just continually going through checking finding where they are rolling them out and if i don't get it the whole way i'll just work on it again and i'll keep on doing this until i've taken out everything that i think i can take out and at that point it'll be ready for resubmission or two so i'm just getting both of them yeah it's already starting to look better there's one over here and the the process that you use which is pr probably why you're watching this video to see how different things are done um, i roll in different directions going back and forth across the area that has the um, the indentation or the crease and the process that you use uh, is just yep i got that one completely out it's gone and there's a couple more up top here is you just go through it again and again and when i talk in my videos about how um you know no one will ever care for your your books as much as as you will and how the biggest advantage to having a press of your own is doing it yourself this is where it comes through because if something doesn't come out the first time and there will be all sorts of things that don't come out on this book then you could just do it again and you just do it again and again until you're happy that's mostly out i left a little bit along can i show it right above my finger here there's a crease that i that i missed so this is uh, you know it's not the the most fun or entertaining job in the world but when you see the results at the end of it it makes it all worthwhile so that crease is gone so i just you know increased the value of the book already i think i've uh, removed a whole bunch of the creases that kind of add up to drop the value and if i can really minimize like I don't won't eliminate but if I can minimize the stuff that's going on up top I'll be in super good shape and at a certain point for this stuff if um if it's been a while since it was misted then you want to um to do the misting again and just kind of keep the book warm and supple and and ready to to accept the changes So in the last chunk of this video, I messed up a bit. I put, I was working at my normal part of the workstation and my one hand got in the, in the way of the other. So it wasn't really visible what I was doing, uh, which is not, you know, in, in the keeping with the spirit of, of what I want to do in this video, in, in these videos. So um, I decided to move everything over to a different table. This is where I normally shoot my videos and, and research comics and things like that. 
and um, and and this will give a better angle because as I'm working on it with this hand, the camera's coming from the opposite direction, so it should work uh, better at least in theory. The downside is that I am not in my in my normal position, but that's totally fine because I in the last. Um, the first press I only showed like a couple of minutes of the process working with the ball bearing I was going at it for way longer after and the same is going to be true here so this just gives you a it's meant to give you a sense of um, of what I do and I'll do most of it actually off camera <clears throat> so this I just pulled it out of the press the Hulk 181 about a minute before I turned on the camera so um, removing the plate I have not looked at it and I have no idea um, what is what is awaiting here hopefully the first press took very well uh, and I, I'm trying to find spots for these things normally I know exactly where everything goes but it's not the case here because I am in a different position okay let's do this and I usually work on with these two as my mat. So, Hulk 181. Um, the spine, I'm going to rotate it. The spine is looking much better already. The big crease along the top is is it the top stretch of red and is minimized to the point where it may not even be visible to the camera I got most of it out the back looks good for the spine I, I had gone through a couple of times with the tacking iron the top of it the ripple is gone and if you were and if you think back to what it looked like before, there were creases that were very visible and they are dulled down after only one press to the point where they're actually pretty hard to see and spot. Um, CGC graders, when they get this, they will not have, you know, they don't have the benefit of seeing the before and after. They're just going by what's in front of them. And um, my goal is to get it to the point where um, you you couldn't tell that the creases were there to begin with. Now, despite the, the successes so far, I'm going to put it through again. I can get more of the um, of the crease at the top. That'll be my starting point and a little bit more work on the spine. And the spine is going to be, it's going to dictate the grade, really. Um, I'm anticipating getting the creasing out to the point where the grade is not going to drop all that much, but the spine ticks um, are going to determine where in the eight range it falls. I'm, I'm hoping for an eight-ish book, um, but if I can minimize these, there's like the color breaks. We have one, two, three, four, five, six color breaks here, but they're really small um, at this point. So I'm hoping. Oop. And before I do that, I just noticed at the bottom of the book, um, right there, just above my finger, there's a speck. This happens sometimes. Um, what it looks like is a speck of dust hit it and I've taken it out so that'll disappear in the next press um, it could have been a tiny piece of eraser because I was working on the book quite a bit getting the back as white as I could get it um, and I, I, I suspect that's actually what it was I see one thing here I'm going to shut this off one more time. See one thing here. This is a very, very, very tiny split. And I can't work on it too much. Um, the issue is that if you 
try to get the dirt out with an eraser you'll you'll rip the split and it'll create a tear in the comic book and the value will decrease dramatically so again the key with the steamer is to make the pages supple warm them up a bit but you definitely do not want to get it too close to the steam because then the pages can get damaged and now you can actually hopefully i'm looking yeah it looks like you'll, you're able to see um, i'm gonna shift the angle just a little bit more over and what i do is um as i trace along the spine but I've got a bigger tacking iron than a lot of people use. Um, the reason I use this larger tacking iron is that's the one I learned with. Um, I bought it when I bought the, the supplies from a friend of mine who did comic pressing. And, um, and so I learned and when I watched videos and I saw everyone else using, you know, a small tacking iron, I, I started researching and trying to, to do it or to, or thinking about buying you know another one but then I got so used to using this it seemed like a bad idea to switch so I didn't I just kept it the way it is now I'm trying to find where the line up top was okay it's right in the middle you can still see it very very faintly and I'm going to just warm up this section so it's the thin strip of red right above the Marvel Comics group. And the ball bearing goes in, in all directions. And when you do this, when you're working on the ball bearing, the page may, or the paper may kind of create a little ripple or curl but that disappears after it goes through the press that's just a very 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 temporary thing all right let's see how much i got of this it's gone um if you didn't know it was there you would have no idea now i just saw in the red section and this is where i get like super nitpicky every little bit that can be approved um should be improved and I, I i i'm almost ocd about this stuff and i'll you know warn people that you know you don't have to be quite this precise but for me it's like i i can't send in something if i know there's a fixable flaw so i'll keep on going and from a CGC grading perspective, they look at the multiple flaws and cumulative impact it has. All right, so that is pretty much gone. Now there's tiny r ripples. If they don't come out during pr a press, like right in here. In fact, I'll just. I'm just going to use the, the very tip of the tacking iron and just kind of go over it a little bit. And then the full tacking iron. Um, and that should disappear with a press. If it doesn't, the next time through, I will use a ball bearing on it. So the back, now it, it had a ton of ticks all the way down here and you see some remnants of it but they're pretty much gone a little indentation from where we removed the particle is still there and then the there's still faint lines along the top and all that stuff has to be worked on so i'm not going to do all of it um, for the for the video some of it is detail work and I will need to rearrange this and go back to my regular workstation to make sure that I catch everything that I can. But I'm just going to start the process as long as I have it going and uh, increase this, you know, length of this part just a bit. And I think we're at 10 minutes of work so far for this section of video. Um, normally, I'm going to get rid of this divot here. Uh, normally, um, it'll take me 
depending on how bad the creasing is, maybe 20 minutes to 30 minutes each time through. And that would be way too long if I did the, the full video on it. Um, now, because there's no, um, no ticks left on the back, but there's indentations that are remnants of ticks, what I typically do, and I don't know if this is proper or not, is I just kind of do a, a very gradual circular pattern moving up and try to work out with, just with the very tip of the tacking iron before doing this. And then I check it out. And if you look down the spine, Oop, can you see it? I'm gonna try to. Okay, where? There we go. If you look down the spine, you will not see very much. Not see very much is code for not good enough in my book. I'm gonna have to work on it some more, but I will do that off camera before shifting to the top. Maybe I'll just do a little bit on the top as long as I like, already have your attention. But this is, at this point, I am thinking that it's already an eight. So um, I'm, I'm fine tuning. I may not increase the grade beyond this, like there's structural flaws to books that will hold the grade at a certain point and impact it, but I refuse to leave anything at all on the table. I will give the graders every opportunity to assign a higher grade than I think this book would would get. So eight range is my goal. Um, with the spine ticks, I just even if I fix everything, I'm not seeing above an eight point five. Even though the rest of the book, aside from the spine, is going to get above that. But, like I said, I'm going to give the graders every opportunity to try to um, assign a higher grade if possible. Okay, now the top. Oh, that rippling. It's hard to get it out of there. There's just little tiny ripples along the very top of the book. Those are so brutal to try to get out. <clears throat> but I will continue to plug away. And there's a little bit right over here. Yeah. So there's work still to be done. This is going to take, I'm guessing, like you can probably barely see it on camera, which means that it's um, not going to be worthwhile to show like subsequent, you know, um, doing this exact same thing if I can't show you because it doesn't show up on cameras, all the flaws are too small. Hello everyone, it's a few days, uh, well three days to be exact, after the last video. The comic, uh, the Hulk 181, made it through the press for a day, cold press for two days and I'm ready to take a look at it. I pulled it out of the cold press area just one minute ago and I haven't pulled everything apart yet. So um, taking off this, let's take a look at what we have. So I will remove the paper and the backing board and we have, let's see, you have very flat comic. We have a few spine ticks that are almost to the point where I cannot do anything else with them. There, are, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine very, very, very small um, color breaks, but all of those, it's the cumulative effect. If there was just one or two of them, it could score into the high nines, but with a lot of them, it can't. Um, the inside looks good. And the back of the comic is flat. I've cleaned up 
three spots where there were there was uh, dirt on it. There's one color break, not color break, but uh, spine tick by the staple and a couple of others that are still showing up slightly. They were very deep on the back, so I can do that in the last press. And the large area on the back, and I'm trying to get an angle so you can see, uh, that was along the very back up here with like massive creasing and it is pretty much gone um, there's a a slight rippling up here so i'll work on it a little bit more it's just kind of a, 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 a the residue of it and just maybe a couple of a faint lines for most of it you can't see that there was anything even there to begin with now one thing that i do see is that there are small spots along the back that will likely appear in graders notes as light foxing on cover you see that and it can get a book can get up into the nines with it i'm not expecting it to impact on the grade by itself but I, I'm very conscious of the fact that cumulative effects um, can have a, a big impact on grade. So um, my next step is going to be to work on the spine front and back, give it another once over. Um, take a look. That looks like almost mild staining there. Right in this spot by my I, I don't know if my camera can really pick up the color well enough because we're talking about very very faint things at this point i almost didn't shoot this video because i kind of knew that i wouldn't be able to show very much but i just um you know for the sake of process i've definitely i can't see the book scoring under an eight at this point so i think i'll achieve the grade bump um that i wanted I'll, I'll do one more round of work on it and then it'll be time to, to cut bait on this one. Um, I don't think that I'll be able to do more than what one more round of working, maybe 15, 20 minutes of work, just really fine tuning, getting all the details that I can get done, um, working the ball bearing along the top, especially where it's rippling and just kind of going over it one last time put it through the press, go through the three day cycle. I'll shoot one more video um, when it comes out of that cycle. And I'm assuming at that point, if everything is clear, it'll be off to CGC at that step. If there's something that came up, if there's a spec somewhere that I missed or, or whatever that I notice right at the end, then I'll go one more time after that. So that's where we're at. Um, <clears throat> thanks for continuing on with this video. I know that this is a long one, but like I said before, this was a request uh, that I do it. Oh, I'm seeing one little remnant of the stack increase. I got it all the way along the edge, but there's one little section. Oh, you can't see it from your angle one little section that spans between my two fingers where the stack increase is still lightly there so i'll i'll give that a once over as well so there we have it um there this is a, a short one but uh, and i'm not going to show the, the the process with everything because you've already seen in other parts of the video so i'll see you in three days for me and a few seconds for you Hello everyone, it's time for the next step where I go through the Hulk 181 one more time. Uh, before I start, excuse the uh, background noise. The air conditioning is running non-stop. We're in the middle of a heat wave that hit um, in the past day or so. And so it's sweltering hot, temperatures are super high. Sweating already in these gloves, um, even with the air conditioning cranked. So there will be a bit of background noise. My apologies. So this is an exciting step. Uh, it's the first step where, if everything passes my checks, I would just submit it to CGC. I'm not expecting that. I'm expecting one more press at least after this. But you never know. It has happened that way before. So 
time for the unveiling of the book. I will take out the paper and I got more aggressive on the back side. Um, instead of just having a piece of paper, I used a piece of paper and a backing board to really come at that um, <clears throat> the creasing in the back and try to, to end it at that at this step. Now the front, I'm holding it at multiple angles. It all looks as good as I can get it, I think. I got the stacking crease completely out, so that's gone. The ticks are there. And the back, I'm not going to get anything else. Wow, okay. So I was expecting to come here and say, you know, show, hey, you know, it's going to take another press or another two presses or whatever. But that is not the case. This is it. It is done. Now, this book, the flaws are, well, now, the, the flaws are um, spine ticks. And I'm trying to hold it while looking at the, ca at the uh, computer to see if you can see it from that angle. You should be able to spot them. There are a row of small ticks. I have seen books with this type, with these types of ticks, get into the 9294 range. There is a um, color drop from a previous crease that I got out uh, right in there. So that should not get to a nine maximum. And there's some stuff going on in the back and including the foxing. So I am seeing um, and what I'm hoping for, the goal was an eight originally when I, when I started this process. I think I got it up to an eight five. That would be where I would put it. Uh, it would be a you know, a, a struggle for me between calling it an eight, an eight or an eight five. Hello everyone, and thank you for making it this far into the video. And if you skipped ahead, no problem. Um, I just got the Hulk 181 back from CGC. And it was a bit of an adventure. Uh, it took less than a month. It's about a week to get there, a week to get back. And the grading process took a little over a week. So, um, you know, call it close to a month. And, um, and the book came back. And with unlimited value submissions, you have to declare a value um, and, and kind of guesstimate where it is. And I, I undershot and they adjusted up, which is what I expected. And based on the amount that they charged, I was expecting an 8.5. And then to my surprise, when I got it back, it was actually an 8.0. And at first I thought, okay, this is kind of harsh. In my eyes, this was an 8.5 all day. I unpacked it and it's an 8.5 all day. I looked at it on the images and it was an 8.5 all day. But something that doesn't show in the images at all and that I can't actually, there's no angle that will show it to you, unfortunately. Um, but there's really, really, really faint creasing where that moderate creasing was at the start. And so uh, what happened was the book unpressed. Um, it, basically what that means is it, when you press out a flaw like a crease, it looks like it's completely gone. You put it in a bag and then a couple weeks later, like a vague or faint um, line or outline of what was there comes back. So this is a known thing. It happens sometimes. So I think I got a little unlucky with this that um, if they had graded it, you know, Im immediately after the last press, I th I'm confident it would have been an 8.5. And what that does is it leaves me with a choice. I can just say, hey, I've got a Hulk 181 that's an 8.0. Beautiful copy, one of the nicer 8.0s you'll ever see. And um, just live with it that way. Or I can try to get all the meat off the bone and, and um, crack and resubmit it again. But uh, 
I'm leaning toward just keeping it because the cost is so high. Like I have to pay shipping there, shipping back and the, the grading cost again. Um, so we're talking by the time all of that's done, it's, you know, running into the four or 500 Canadian dollar range. And I'm really not increasing the value enough by doing that, like by itself. Uh, if I had multiple books, I'd probably consider it, but this is the only one that I have for unlimited value right now. So I'm, I'm inclined to, to just kind of keep it the way it is and just say, well, I got a little unlucky on this one, which is unfortunate because this is actually the first um, book that I'm tr doing the, um, you know, the, the pressing start to finish uh, style of video for, and I, you know, invested all this time and effort into it. And yes, I, I did get a great bump. It went from a 7 to 7.0 to an 8.0. And that's all I was hoping for at the start. But honestly, this book could have been more. Uh, it's, I don't think, um, based on like a color break increase over here, I don't think it gets to a nine, but I do think that without you know, the faint creasing on the back cover, I do think it's still an 8.5 all day. So it's just going, I, I suspect, and I'm pretty confident that it's just going to be a really, really nice 8.0. So um, please, um, if you like this video, uh, it, this was way more work than than a normal video that I shoot where it's just kind of one take and I post it up. Um, this requires doing different stages and different days and putting all of the different videos to get, sort of videos together and, and, and telling a longer story over a very long period of time. So if you like this type of approach, please let me know and I'll do more uh, videos like this. Um, and if not, like I can, I could do like other types of crack and resub videos too, or do both. Uh, that's probably what I'll end up doing. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching and thank you for making it through, um, my longest video that I've ever posted. I don't know what the final runtime will be yet, but I'm confident it'll be the longest one. And, um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll do more of these if, if you like, and, um, and until then, I'll have other videos. So until I see you again, take care and happy collecting.